What's up, you guys? I just wanted to make a really fast video talking to y'all about the top mistakes that I made my first year in owning my pressure washing business. I hope you all don't make these same mistakes, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about what they are, how they happen, etc. So the first thing y'all need to look out for is organic paint. Now, before I made this mistake, I knew to look out for organic paint, specifically Sherwin-Williams organic paint. So I'm going out to this one house. It's a painted green house. I have a little pump sprayer with SH in it. I spray a little bit on a little area, test spot, you know, let it sit for a minute. Looks like it's fine. So I continue coating the whole side of the house with SH. Loop back around to rinse it. Lo and behold, the pigment from the paint, from the green paint, is just essentially melted away. There was just all these kind of white streaks on it. It looked really bad. I was pissing myself and just so frustrated because I knew to look out for this, and yet I still made this mistake. In hindsight, if I could go back in time, I would let that mix, that initial test spot I did, I would let it sit for longer, and or I would put a stronger mix on there and just to get immediate results to see if it's organic paint in a non-conspicuous area, of course. Ended up repainting it for the client, cost 600 bucks. Look out for organic paint. The next thing is gutter brightening. In the beginning, I used LA's Totally Awesome. I still use it at times. I put about 60% LA's Totally Awesome and 40% water into a bucket. Started my gutter brightening process. Just ripped the paint right off of it. it um, I let it sit for about two minutes. And whether I let it sit for too long, which probably a combination of both of these, or the mix was too strong, Probably more so letting it sit for too long, but you can always go, um, you can always add more mix and make it stronger, but you can never go back. So just when you're doing these test areas or, you know, uh, special service removals, just start out with a minimal amount and then work your way up, which kind of leads me to my next thing is do not let chemicals dry on the surface. We were doing a rust removal one time. Uh, I had F9 bark. I was following the cookbook. I thought I was following it to a T. I let the F9 bark dry on the rust stain. I let it sit for too long without wetting it. Ended up completely discoloring the concrete. Looked awful. Felt awful. Do not let chemicals dry, whether it's SH on the siding. If it's really hot, just go by and, you know, spritz some water on it. Do not let chemicals dry. The next thing is taping up electrical outlets. So in the beginning of my business, I was really diligent about this. Tape up every single thing, even if it didn't need it, I would tape it up. I wanted peace of mind. Then of course, as time goes on, you know, I talk to some other guys or, you know, see videos. No one else really tapes up every house, you know, unless it's something obvious that needs taping. And so I just kind of got a little lazy about it because we're doing so much work you know, three, four jobs a day. And when you're doing, you know, two to four jobs a day, you're not rushing jobs, but it's, it's labor intensive. And so, you know, you don't want to take that five, 10 extra minutes it takes to tape up all outlets, all exposed wiring, whatever. And so I highly suggest just tape up all outlets. It'll give you peace of mind. I know, especially once you get more work coming in, it's going to be tedious. But once you start smelling that electrical burning smell, you're going to be pissing yourself. Don't let that ha happen. Just tape stuff up. So the next thing is too much pressure on concrete. You know, in this business, um, a lot of the homes you'll do, say, you know, house washing, a lot of it is essentially the same process for every different job, but it's not a one, one size fits all kind of thing. We were doing a house with concrete and, you know, same process we always did, you know, pre-treat, surface clean, post-treat and started surface cleaning and we were taking off. Now, bear in mind this concrete, it wasn't brand new. It was probably about two years old but no, no older than three years old, but it wasn't, you know, just like freshly poured. So we were, we were surface cleaning it and I saw the cream coat from the top 
was starting to come off. And you'll know this if you're surface cleaning and you'll see kind of a milky substance come, you know, from the water that's draining from your surface cleaner. That means you need to stop what you're doing. You're etching the concrete. You're taking the top coat off. Be really diligent, you know, now and concrete even looks semi-new. We'll just soft wash it and, you know, do a J-Rod fan tip, something like that. Look out for that, you know, either get you a pressure gauge, dial down your your uh, your throttle on your pressure washer, change the tips in your surface cleaner. That that That's what I would suggest most is changing the tips in your surface cleaner so you won't have to worry about that. A little thing, um, just a little tidbit. Ask clients where they uh, where they heard about you. You know, we did that here and there in the first year, but at that this data is priceless. Ask them, you know, did you hear about us via Google, Facebook, um, you know, Bandit Signs? Get this data so you can put more marketing dollars into that that marketing strategy. The last thing I'm going to tell y'all about is just practicing and studying. I practiced and studied a lot, and it helped me a lot, but you can only study so much. You have to be hands-on with things. You don't want to go out messing up people's properties, but for me, I'm a hands-on learner, and it can be scary getting out of your comfort zone and, you know, feeling like you have to have everything, you know, you have to know absolutely everything before you start this business. Study, do your dil due diligence, but just start. You don't want to have paralysis by analysis, which is really easy to get. You'll just be like, oh, but I don't know how to do this. How does this work? Trust me, in anything in life, and especially in this business, I'm not the most you know handyman kind of guy. There was a lot of stuff that I had to learn, and I'm still learning about you know the different equipment, different parts that are needed, you know, um, in the beginning, I would, you know, doing the hose reels and everything. I didn't know you would have to screw stuff on so tight and just having it a little bit loose and nothing will, it won't run smoothly. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little carried away, but my point is just start, just start. You guys get out of your comfort zone. That's where the most, most growth happens and you will be thanking yourself in the future. That's it for today's video, you all. If you have any other questions, please comment back. I'll make a video about it or just comment back to you and let you know what I think. Um, just let me know. I hope you all are having a lovely day. I hope life is treating y'all well. Look forward to the next video.